good? start to move to see the rods get out of a line to see them move on the position blocks start knocking these welds out as these things start moving you know over time you've got to readjust your, your mount in the case of this crane everything has been mounted recently and everything has been solidly done but over time if you you know this crane's age if you, if you hit heavy loads you could run into problems where things start getting loose and things need to be readjusted retorqued retightened down other maintenance features on a radio remote current train like this is a high pressure filter. Indication of how much, uh, yeah, if, if it should get too much pressure in, if there gets to be a problem with, with the oil getting contaminated. We like to see oil change at least twice a year, at least once a year. Something is done. Um, but the uh, radio remote cranes all include uh, high pressure filters. So it's a crane, the oil that hits the crane, the control valve, is its finest filtration possible. You have an oil tank, someplace on an oil tank, you're usually gonna have a, a sight gauge. On this crane, it's here and here. You've got a low level and a high level. As long as this one's full and that one's not super over full, you've got a, you know, you're probably in a good place. Top of the crane, top of the tank, you're gonna have a, uh, a return filter. It's gonna be the filter in your oil as it comes, after it's come through the crane, it goes in the return filter before it refills in the tank. Uh, on the tank also is a great flat spot, so you have the uh, load chart. So you can examine where, what your capacities are, what reaches. Always important to know what your load is so that you're operating within the parameters the crane can handle. Secondary load chart is on the, on the column on this particular crane. We're going to decide if we're going to use radio or manual. We'll be turning on one of those things. We'll be using the radio today. We also have the dead stop button. Uh, when you're stopping, you just push it in to restart it. You turn it on there. radio remote control box you know, with the antenna it's receiving signals from our transmitter this again uh, the item is the pressure gauge it monitors the pressure in the main lift cylinder gives you an indication of how hard you're stressing the cane crane you know if you're in the green zone obviously there's no undue pressure on the crane yellow starts to get worrisome and the red would de de designate a potential you know working the crane to death working it awfully close to its uh, rated capacities or in excess of you know going in overload going uh, too much capacity uh, controls for the you know the different functions of the crane are all listed here um, typically they're they're based on you know where rotation is stabilizers you know usually one side of it and then main lift secondary lift and extensions is pretty consistent across all cranes all over the world a, on, on a uh, remote control crane with this Bosch valve you've got an extra function here which is actually controls the oil flow because they operate anything on the mechanical controls on this particular crane, you operate the function and you control the oil with a second operation. You need two, two hands, two, op two levers have to operate before anything will move when you're in manual controls. Then we come to the remote, we've got the same situation, it's been pushed down, so we turn it and it pops out. So it's ready to go. trigger that controls the oil flow as fast as you push that controls how fast the crane goes you can just get a little bit of oil and creep make it creep really slow 
to operate the stabilizers on the road, you have a couple of switches. This one tells it's in the stabilizer function, and this tells the stabilizer up and down. We need to go down, and we're going to suck some oil. Suck some oil. You can see how I can speed it up and down with how fast I pull the trigger. Get my finger off the switch. And we want to make sure that stabilizer beam comes up and touches its inside pad. It pulls a little bit of weight out of the chassis, but you don't want to take the wheels off the ground. You just want to get some chassis weight. Something about like that. Now we're going to do the other side. We're going to be watching these bubble levels to make sure that we're going to point where the crane ends up being pretty level. Uh, the cranes don't like to rotate uphill, so you want to have the crane base as level as possible. If you've got a situation where your truck nose is a little bit, maybe you need to get the truck wheels up on uh, some blocks to help it be level. But side to side, we can level with the stabilizers. It's a magnet on the remote control so you can set it on a metal surface and it stays in place for you. Don't have to worry about it falling around. Beam is unlocked. Pull it out. Make sure it's ready to pop back in place when the yellow is popping out. And it locks in place. Lock the lever down inside. That locks the oil in the cylinder. Someone comes up and bumps the handle. The crane's not going to lose stable stability, lose, lose its position in the world. Now it's important with this with a knuckle bolt that this beam be up tight before you open up the main boom. So secondary boom this way really means the secondary boom has to go down tight all the way packed in before you open up the main boom. We'll be using the remote for the rest of this stuff. Uh, as we go forward. Um, we are going to, uh, in the remote you can see the rotation is also marked with a red. So first thing we talked about is bringing the secondary boom down tight. So we're looking at our secondary boom and motion this way should be bringing the boom down. The secondary boom on here is here and we want to be making sure you're bringing it down. So we're going to be tilting that trigger up there and pulling Make sure that's tight. So now we're going to want to open up the main boom, which will be this indicator. Okay. And opening is going to be this, going to be down, and it should be opening up. Really slow. Pull it really hard because now we're clear of everything, and the boom can open up nice and safe. Want to get the boom up high enough? we can feel free to open up the secondary boom. So I want to open it up. I want to raise it up. I'm going to bring it down and take it that way. And we're controlling the boom around, boom up that position. I'm going to swing around, pick up the load on the other side. So now I'm going to switch to the rotation. And again, just, just hitting that's no good till I pull the trigger. Oh, you want to rotate the other way. Creep it really slow by just pulling the trigger a little bit. Spot over my load there. slowly because we're going to check and make sure that the uh, load is centered in the slings. We want to have a nice balanced lift if we can. Now we're dragging this across the air because the center point is over here. So I'm going to rotate over a little bit to try and make sure this, this lift is as smooth as it can be. Comes up to rest. And now we'll continue to lift by, well, I guess we're going to continue to lift. We have nothing much left to track. And we'll hit the main boom. Up off the bed. Now, 
shouldn't be rotating over my head. So I'm going to back up a little bit here so we can rotate back this way. We never like to lift the load more than we have to. We're clearing everything by a couple of inches. That's all we're really worried about. Someday a load will fall. We always like to take a look and keep it as kind of as low as we need to. Okay, we're going to continue our motion here. We'll rotate a little bit more. Moving the main boom down. Moving the secondary boom out a little bit. And theoretically, you could run both those things at the same time and kind of keep the load at the same position. Now we're going to extend out a little bit. Take it off the slings at this time. And we can retract the crane. it all the way in tight. We're going to bring it into that cylinder deadheads. We're there. Now for rotating it back, typically there's a mark on the bottom of the crane that will give you some indication of where your correct alignment is. You'll have two arrows lined up. Looks like I'm going to have to go a little bit more around to get to the right spot. Let's see if that's... Uh, that's a little tough to do. That might be more right there. It always depends on where you're standing and what you see. So it's very important that you're watching it as it comes down. We know the secondary booms all the way up. We retract it all the way down. So now we're going to bring the main boom down. And we're going to watch things. Critical component is not running a crane into anything. We've got a couple things we're watching for. The boom come next to the tank. I'm not happy with that. I think it should be a little bit further. Not that way. That way. So we got a little chrome kind of kind of slide roll. It's gonna roll up on this ramp here. And we want that to happen. And then up high there's a little yoke on the end of this uh, main boom. It's gonna hit a pin on the other side. We'll do a little more close up on that. Right now I'm watching as the secondary boom comes down next to the hydraulic oil tank. Make sure we're in a good place. Looks like we're pretty good. Oh, 
is going to hit the ramp because we're in the right spot. We're next there, so that's going to be fine. Really need to swing around to the other side. And now look at this bracket. It's going to catch that poop on the other side. Again, we don't want to be standing underneath the crane. We want to come down and watch this thing walk into place. So we're going to grab the stabilizer function here, and we're going to go for stabilizer up, and we're going to open up the oil flow so that oil can actually get in there, and up comes the leg. When it stops travel, we'll lock it back down. Now we'll go ahead and uh, retract this side at the same time, since we're on this side. We need to loosen up the pin. And then we're going to slide the beam in. About here, we're going to put that pin back down so it catches the hole when it gets in the right spot. So we're going to pull in slowly until it catches and it's all locked in. And now we'll swing around to the other side and get the same effect. Put it back on off because we're getting near the end of this, I think. Now that we've completed operations in the crane, we'll come in and turn the crane controls back off. In this crane, we've got a switch on the dash for the crane power, which power to the uh, to the crane for the radio remote. A switch also that works the throttle, fix the engine throttle up a little bit. You're doing crane operations, so the pump is providing the right pressure and flow for the uh, you know, for the crane so that it can do its maximum loads. And you've got another switch. In this case, it's an electronic switch for the uh, actually hydraulic pump that operates on this particular crane. Different cranes are going to have different operational procedures for you know, PTO operations. Sometimes it's going to be a simple switch. Other times it could be an old pull cable uh, engage, requiring you to engage the clutch or you know, whatever. But every crane is going to be a little different. More frequently these days, you're going to have some kind of electric switch that will either engage an air shifted you know, PTO or an electric uh, switch for, for, for turning the PTO on. Thank you. 